Mr. and Mrs. Vizareth uh, taking a weekly video for you guys, your first of uh, quite a few that are planning to come. Uh, sorry I had to take the video a little later than I wanted to. Uh, they were still working on your framing process. I had to make sure I caught the house when there wasn't any contractors in here so you could hear me talking in the video. Um, as you can see, the walls are already up on your house. They've got your roof on. Uh, the only thing they're missing on the roof is the shingles, which should be going on soon. Uh, this part of the process is a very fast-moving part um, where you'll see the home looks like it's, it's coming up in no time, which it is. Um, the slowest part is actually going to be once they put the brick on the home, which they're actually very close to being ready for. Um, these metal strips you see here are bendable strips that go in between the bricks to attach the bricks to the house so they don't pull away so they have some way of anchoring to the house. Uh, the bricks will actually be stacked on what's called a brick ledge which is this concrete ledge that's left over when they pour the foundation they actually pour this when they pour the foundation to make sure that they have the room to put, stack the brick on and they put these in between the bricks as they go up to anchor the bricks into the house. Um, I want to talk to you guys about a few things on the outside but I'm gonna work my way inside here in a minute so that I can uh, so you can hear me because it is a little windy. I want to make sure that the wind isn't actually making it difficult for you to hear me. Uh, I'm just going to walk around the outside and then go inside and I'll explain some of the stuff you're seeing here on the outside of the home. As well as some of the processes and stuff that you'll see on the inside of the home in the next couple weeks as well as why we do certain things that we do on the home. Um, being in business for 29 years, Mr. Henry has actually done a lot of pioneering efforts towards new home construction when it comes to residential homes. He's brought a lot of commercial grade quality to uh, new home constructions and one of the big things is our foundation and I'll go over that once we get inside because it's a little hard to hear I can tell with the winds already blowing pretty strong okay guys now that I'm inside I'm gonna go over a couple things that you saw on the outside of the home couple of them being these layers of plastic wrap that you see on the home. Uh, this white wrap is called a dowel wrap. And the dowel wrap is used to create a water vapor, vapor barrier between the actual wood that's used on the outside framing of the house and the brick itself. Because of the temperature change differences between the inside of the home and the outside of the home, you can get a condensation buildup between the brick and the wood, the oriented strand board that we use as a wood, and I'll go over what that is in a little bit. Um, the oriented strand board can, uh, is, is moisture resistant so it wouldn't be a big deal even if it did go against it. It's very, very moisture resistant. Um, but as you, I'll explain a little bit more, but when you actually come down and follow the dowel wrap down, you get a black liner here that we actually put in at the bottom of the brick. About two brick up every four brick or so, there's a, there's a slit of mortar missing in between them and that's called a weep hole. Uh, which is code for the area and what it does is it allows any moisture barrier that builds up to come down and flow out through this 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 wrap this plastic piece here this it's very thick plastic um, and it allows any condensation that could build up to, to come out of the weep holes on the home um, now coming to the windows themselves we do a four-way seal on the windows no other builder I've ever seen does that we use the black plastic wrap versus the same stuff that we use down at the bottom for any kind of for the weep holes we use that as the base level for the windows and we do the dowel wrap over that uh, once we install the window we do what's called almost like an aluminum tape it looks like an aluminum tape um, but it's got almost like a tar texture on the inside of it that helps seal the window and then once they brick the house they actually go back and put a silicone seal around the window so it's a four-way seal most of the builders use only a one or two-way seal on the window itself but we make sure we use a four-way, which is one of the advantages of our homes versus our competition. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is actually this oriented strand board that you can see here on the inside of the home. Um, they haven't gotten to doing the insulation or the electrical, so you can see it very well. It looks a lot like pressed wood, but it's a far superior product. Uh, Mr. Henry was one of the was one of the, was the first contractor, or first new home builder in the area that that used this material. Uh, the material they used before that was plywood. I don't know if you've actually cut a piece of plywood and looked down the side of it, but there's a lot of gaps in the plywood because it's thin pieces of veneer that are glued together to make the wood itself. Um, the downside is the glue they use in the veneer is, uh, is very, very, very susceptible to heat and to, and to, to water. So it actually starts to separate. If you actually submit, submerse it in a bucket of water, it actually starts separating in less than a day. Or in a strand board, which is an engineered wood, uh, they use 
a lot of it and press it down with a machine in a, in a specific kind of glue they use. It can be submerged in a bucket of water for over a week and actually will not start to break apart. Um, so it's a very, very great engineered piece of material that we use. Like I said, Mr. Henry was the first one to use it in the area and now everybody has followed suit. Uh, to my knowledge, there are no builders that use plywood, but there might be a few still out there. Uh, there are some that use plywood on the, on the roof, um, but we use Oriana strand board throughout the roof, throughout the entire home on the exterior walls. Uh, the other thing that we do that not every builder does is we use what's called engineered trusses. They are stamped in by a machine, um, so they're more precise. The other version would be stick-built trusses, which would be trusses that are built on site by, uh, by the contractors that are installing it. Uh, the downside of doing that is they're not very precise. They don't have the plates that stamp them in location. There's a lot of wasted material. The advantage of doing the engineered trusses is it saves us a little bit of money, which we then can pass on to you as the buyer, as well as it guarantees that they're actually engineered to precision and they're actually designed to hold the weight that they're supposed to. One of the other big changes that we do versus a lot of other builders is we use what's called a southern yellow pine on our trusses. On the top piece we use a number one or better which is the best wood you can use. For your roof line is a number one or better which means it's a denser, thicker, stronger piece of wood. Um, let's see, I don't see if they, have, they don't have it stamped anywhere where I can show you what they look like. Uh, but they have a number one stamped on them on the top pieces and that's what we use to make sure that your roof line under no circumstances should be compromised. Um, now on the studs we use a different material and I'll explain to you the reason why. Southern yellow pine is a very strong wood but it can warp which is not an issue for a roof because it's still going to hold its strength. In a wall you don't want any material that can warp or bend because then your drywall will warp or bend directly because of it um, which obviously is a huge cosmetic issue. We use a spruce pine which is still a very strong piece of wood but it's not the piece you would want to use when it comes to your trusses. Um, but this, is, this wood is very, very strong, very durable, and it won't actually warp or bend nearly quite as easily as any other wood on the market, which is why we use that. Now, I talked about our foundation for a little bit, and I'm going to give you a little bit more information regarding that. When it comes to your foundation, we use what's called a monolithic foundation. It's a one-time pour commercial-grade foundation. As a matter of fact, Mr. Henry had to teach the contractors that he used to pour his foundations how to do so when he came into the industry almost 30 years ago. Uh, a lot of other builders use what's called the stem wall foundation. It's a lot easier to pour, but it has some downsides to it. Uh, the downside, the huge downside, is the fact that with a stem wall foundation, you use cinder blocks along the edge. So instead of there being solid concrete, you have cinder blocks that wrap around the edge of your home. And they do several different pours to create the foundation. The downside is, is you can actually create air pockets or cracks in the foundation because there's several different pours. Now, that's not to say that you won't have any cracks in your foundation. There's no way around the fact that you'll have like spider cracks in your foundation. You'll see them in your driveway. But the advantage to, this, to the monolithic is that it dries faster, number one, and it's a stronger foundation once it dries. Um, like I said, it's one solid piece of concrete rather than several different pieces that are put together. And it does have rebar running through it just like every other foundation out there. Now, I'm gonna walk through and show you each room in the house. Like I said, I walked in so that you could actually see things a little bit easier and you could hear me. But I'm going to come through the front door area and walk through your different sections of the house so you have an idea of where you're sitting at with the home. This is your foyer of the home here. Your entrance into your garage, but they've got your, looks like your shower unit's already here. This is where your air conditioning will be in the garage. Um, when it comes in a little bit further, I'll show you guys, uh, we should have the electrical and the, and the insulation are close to it by the time the next this Friday rolls around. This is your air conditioning vent where you replace your filters for your air conditioning unit. Your dining room here with your window over, over uh, the dining room area. I'm going to go in a counterclockwise motion of the home. This is where your pantry will be located. Now when I show you rooms, I'm going to show you the flooring because it's kind of hard in the video to see the depth perception of the room. This is where your laundry room will be located at, and that's your hookups for your washing machine, and the dryer connections will be next to that. And that's the window in your laundry room. This is where your kitchen will be located, as well as the breakfast area in the kitchen with the window open in the back. It's your sliding glass door that will access your patio. I'll show you the patio here. This is your normal 10 by 12 patio in your larger area there. Turn around. This is where your living room will be located out of your family room. Gonna walk into the master suite. 
here's the master suite. Like I said, I'm going to show you a lot of the floor and I'll show you the rest of the room because it's a lot easier to get an idea of the depth perception because there's no walls to give you an idea. And we're going to walk into the bathroom. That's where your tub will be located at. And your shower. It's your water closet there. As well as your linen closet inside the water closet. This is where your double vanity will be located at. And then of course your walk-in closet here. We're walking out of the master suite and into where your family room will be located at. I'm going to swing around this wall here. And this is where your, your living room is. This pipe you see coming out of for the bathroom, which I'm going to work my way that way. This is the hallway that leads to your three additional bedrooms and your additional bathroom. It's where your toilet would be located at and your vanity would be located here. And your shower would be located there. This is your middle bedroom, which is actually backs up to the master suite. This is where the closet is. I'm going to walk up so you can see it a little bit better. This is your linen closet for the bathroom right there. This is one of your front bedrooms, the one with the 8 foot ceiling in it, and your big window. Your closet for this room. And then we're going to work our way into your last bedroom, which has the 10 foot ceilings in it, like your common areas. Got your larger window in it. This is where your closet will be located at in here. Now, if you guys have any questions, please do not hesitate to email or call me at any time. Um, if I don't answer, leave me a message and I promise I'll call you back soon. If you need anything else, don't hesitate to let me know. Hope you guys had a great weekend.